Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at class Hydrozoa. Now, Hydrozoa is the second of the four major classes that we see in phylum Cnidaria. The first one we took a look at was class Scyphozoa. So now we have Hydrozoa, that leaves Cubozoa and Anthozoa. So let's go ahead and take a look at Hydrozoa. Alright, so first some fast fast facts about these guys. Uh, they are colonial animals, so that should be one of the first thing that pops into your head when you think about class Hydrozoa. So they're colonial animals, they're found both in the ocean and in freshwater. The polyps are actually the dominant form that we see in class Hydrozoa. Now, when we talked about Scyphozoa, I told you to make a note of the fact that in Scyphozoa, Medusa was the dominant stage. So here in class Hydrozoa, the polyps are actually the dominant stage. The polyps are actually bigger than what we saw in Scyphozoa as well. They kind of look like little bushes, little underwater bushes with a whole bunch of branches. And you have these little flower looking things at the end or on the sides coming off of the branches. Those are the polyps. So they are colonial polyps. The medusas that we see in this class are going to be very small. Okay, so the medusa is not the dominant stage, the polyps are, and the medusa stage is a very short part of their life cycle. Here we see the freshwater hydra. So the freshwater hydra um, is an exception to many of the things that we see going on in class hydrozoa. It doesn't have a medusa stage at all, and it's also found in freshwater versus the ocean. Um, but usually we take a look at these under the microscope in class, um, but here is our opportunity right now to take a look and see how these guys look and how they move around. But remember, these are the exception to usually what we see in class hydrozoa. So let's start with the medusa stage. Remember, this is a short part of their life cycle because the polyp is the dominant stage in class hydrozoa here. Their medusa, are very small. So hydrozoan medusas are very small, half a centimeter to six centimeters in diameter. So that is a really, really small jellyfish there. Okay, so the medusa is very, very small. And remember, these aren't the true jellies, the scyphozoans are the true jellies. Okay. Um, the nidocytes or nidocytes are found in the epidermis only. With the scyphozoans, they were found in the epidermis and in the gastrodermis too, the cells that lined the gastrovascular cavity. A key feature to tell if you're looking at a hydrozoan medusa is they have a vellum. So it's this little shelf, if you take a look at the image down here, it's this little shelf on the inside of the bell that we can actually see um, that our scyphozoans don't have. If you remember a unique trait that we saw in the scyphozoan medusa was the oral arms. Here they don't have oral arms but they do have a vellum, so that's a disting distinguishing characteristic. Their bell shape is rounded versus an elongated dome or bell shape that we see in Scyphozoan. So they have more of a rounded bell like we see here. So if you take a look at all these, these should look very different from the Scyphozoan medusa that we saw. So we don't see any oral arms here, they're very small and they usually have a clear see-through body. Taking a look at some diagrams here, here you can see the vellum, that little shelf I was talking about at the bottom of the bell the manubrium here on the inside, and then the little frilly parts here are not oral arms, but the gonads. And then we can even see the gastrovascular cavity. So the mouth slash anus right here, the manubrium leads up into the gastrovascular cavity. So here is a, a video I took at the Long Beach Aquarium where you can actually see uh, some of these guys swimming around here really interesting to watch. Uh, if you take a look at their movements, their movements are a little bit different than what we saw with the Scyphozoan jellies. The polyp stage is the dominant stage. So the polyp stage, we have colonial polyps, which means a whole bunch of individuals are actually living together in the same place. Now with the colonial polyps, each individual polyp is called a zoid. So a zoid is an individual, and they're all connected on these branch-like structures. Just like with our bodies, whenever you have a multicellular organism like us, we have to assign tasks to our cells. In order for all those cells to work together, we want to make things run efficiently, so the best way to do that is to have certain functions for certain cells. So our heart cells, our cardiac cells, they have a specific function that deals with our heart pumping. Our brain cells have a different function. Our stomach cells have a different function. So tasks get divided, so that way things can run more efficiently. So here, the zoids, there's different types that are in charge of different 
activities, different functions. So the gastrozoids are the ones that deal with feeding. Remember I told you guys before, gastrovascular cavity, whenever you hear gastro, think about dealing with digestion. The dactylozoids are the ones that actually capture prey. The gonozoids are gonna be the ones that um, deal with reproduction. Okay, so this is a colonial polyp we see here, here, colonial polyp, and you can actually see how different the zoids look. So here is a gastrozoid versus a gonozoid right here. A cool special feature that some, definitely not all, organisms in hydrozoa have is um, the siphonophores. So siphonophores are a special group of organisms that have um, basically traveling polyps is basically what they are. So here is a Portuguese man of war. That's probably one of the most famous cnidarians out there. Most people have heard of the Portuguese man of war. So it is a siphonophore. It is not a jellyfish. So that's something really, really important to know. So this is not a jellyfish. This is not a bell filled with mesoglea. This is actually an air sac and a sail. So that way it can actually float along the surface and move along with the wind currents. Down here is where you find the polyps. So this is basically a traveling, moving around group of polyps um, that floats around catching prey. Okay? So that is our siphon, it's an example of a siphonophore and this is called the pneumatophore right here. So this air sac is the pneumatophore. Again, it's not a bell filled with mesoglea, um, it's an air sac. For humans, Portuguese man o' war can be deadly, um, but definitely painful. Anybody who's ever been stung by a Portuguese man o' war talks about how painful, excruciating and painful it is. And even if you tried to avoid these by looking out for their uh, pneumatophore here, unfortunately, some of them can ha have tentacles up to 197 feet long. Okay, so it's kind of hard to look out for that when it's nowhere near you. All right, as far as feeding goes, um, they feed on small crustaceans, insect larvae, fish larvae, small to large fish. So if you take a look here, um, this is actually pretty cool. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, so I'm going to go forward once it catches it. So the dactylozoid uh, actually caught it first, and now the gastrozoid is going to come along and do its job. So I'm going to speed it up here so we can actually see it. So it comes along. Remember, we have division of tasks here, each one doing a special job. And then it's going to pull it inside. And eventually it's inside of its gastrovascular cavity. So it'll be begin to digest it and then it it'll share the nutrients that it gets with all of the other zoids that are part of this colony. All right. Finally, we have the life cycle of these guys. Now, as we've gone through, I keep on comparing to class Skyphozoa. So here, let's take a look at the life cycle. Here's our description, but let's take a look at the image to help us sort this all out. So the polyp is the dominant stage here. So the polyp right here is going to reproduce asexually and sexually, uh, depends on species. So they will bud off medusa. The medusa will reproduce sexually with sperm and egg coming together. That forms a planula, so just like the Scyphozoans, the initial fertilized egg develops into a planula first. It settles, and then it develops into a colonial polyp. So that's something that's definitely different. Um, we don't have the Scyphostoma that releases the ephyre. Um, we have the planula develop into a colonial polyp instead. So when we take a look at all these guys, some key characteristics to remember as we think of class Hydrozoa is the fact that they have the polyp as the dominant stage. When you look at the medusa, the medusa don't have any oral arms, but they do have a vellum. And then their reproduction and life cycle is a little bit different than we saw with class Skyphozoa. So if we take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison here, um, we see which stage is dominant. The oral arms versus the vellum as a unique characteristic on the medusa. The shape of the bells on these guys and then where we find the nidocytes as well. So epidermis and gastrodermis versus the epidermis just over here. The polyps, so here we have a scyphostoma that will create the ephyre that get released as the baby jellyfish. Here we have a colonial polyp instead and they're much, much bigger than these guys here. The medusa has the oral arms and they're really big with bells filled with mesoglea. These guys are really small and they have the vellum on theirs and then we can see and compare the life cycles. So those are all the characteristics um, that we 
need to know for class hydrozoa. And as far as comparison, there are other things that I want you to think about as well. So this is, doesn't cover everything. It's not fully comprehensive here. So you should be thinking of other differences that are between class Scyphozoa and class hydrozoa.